<laughs> all right guys here we go with another adventure and as you can see i'm in the old tow pig i actually dropped the wagon off at the interior or not at the interior shop took it from the interior shop to the glass shop and uh, there's an El Camino I've been needing to pick up, and it was out here around the same area within 30 minutes. So I thought we could capital, capitalize on the opportunity to kill two birds, one stone. And I'm currently following a gentleman down some driveway, and he's in a slam short wide, square body. And uh, so I already like how this adventure's going. The guy who ain't afraid to drive his truck off road, that's what I'm talking about. Now this car, I've seen it on Marketplace cheap enough kind of thing if we gotta pick it up i figure we'll do a will it run and uh, we'll see what we get into there and then from that uh we'll decide what we're gonna do with this thing and i've not talked to this guy yet about recording so let me get here and actually meet this guy and see what he has to say we got good news one and good news two good news one is uh, i followed him up into a little hidey hole here a little field of dreams is what it looks like good news number two is he said we're a-okay to record and do what we got to do and uh guys i only seen like two pictures of this thing and i bought it and i just seen it in person for the first time and i do not regret that it is white it has a yellow and an orange pinstripe which makes it a lot cooler i'm gonna try to get it pulled up out of there but i may i may show it to y'all first but let me get situated here well here she is guys let's check her out see that stripe i was talking about she runs all the way down the body Look at our tie downs right there. No trespassing. Keep away from Mario Camino. Uh, you said they had pulled the gas tank? Yeah. All right, so we know it ain't got a gas tank in it. Allegedly, it ran before that. Not sure why gas tank's out. Uh, here's our roughest pan on back door. She's got a couple whammies on her. She does have a hitch where we're ready to tow. Last tagged. 2009 it looks like it's actually the year i graduated what was that uh down this side she's pretty good and then we got the humdinger on this door uh most of that would probably knock out interior does not look awful hey she's got a key in it what a rig we're gonna be in good shape got the cool look at them wheels and tires i'm a fan of that on this in fact if we had a matching set of that all the way around or these ones shoot what are those pontiac trans am is this a pontiac trans am wheel Pro Pro maybe or that that's, that's what thing. came factory right yeah, probably it's a cutlass cutlass wheel yeah. well you can look around here and tell you'd probably know all about those it's got all the trans ams uh up front's in really good shape emblems just ready to be buffed on and shined up hood well, that's going to disappoint some of y'all. She is just a little V6. But don't worry about that. She'll still do good for us. Fresh rodents have been in here. That's real recent. Uh, she does look all complete, though. I don't know much about these guys. 3.8 liter, you said? Yeah, I think 3.8, 3. maybe. So, we'll dig into this further. Uh what a find for no more than the few pictures i've seen and just bought it uh i am not upset about it the stripes make it the stripes and the tie downs well in that little chrome arch it looks good too i think we're going to try to hook onto this thing and see if we can kind of drag it that away where we can get it straighter that way i'm not having to load load it backwards on the trailer here all right i actually just pulled the whole truck forward stretched the winch out some we're gonna just see if we can start to pull it this way and we might be able to swing it. Hey, she's rolling. That's a plus. Oh, she kind of popped up out. I seen it jump, felt it give. Anytime it wants to roll, it's gonna make your life easier. We like that. We should get straight. <laughs> I think we need to steer back this way just for as much as we can. I'm now cut that way. I'll move this to the center where we're not just pulling one side.
you steer that like you've done one or two of these yeah <laughs> we got her loaded down strapped down hood's kind of a little iffy so i put one across the hood just in case i don't know how much trash we're going to lose between here and pot county but we're going to try our best not to i put a strap across there got our old ford bed with the slots on it that's a pretty cool trailer right there someone's been using it recently too because she's got a nice little uh nice little uh, jack on her uh, i had to bring y'all over here though because as owner and operator of the box truck mafia you cannot see a box truck and not come check it out this one's on a square body she's a dually i think she's a dually is she oh yeah she is she's a big old rig look at the inside look oh she got a 5.3 little engine cover you want ls swap this thing <laughs> i don't know can't beat a good box truck he said he was planning on putting a flatbed on it hey you got a few of these old fords or just the beds well there's the rest of that one you got a good cabin front end there patina matching bed old doors had a uh, better days that thing is a unit dang here's another el camina look at this thing she got that sweet green patina what a looker it says 350 on the on the fender was that one for sale too it was i we gave it to a friend of ours oh yeah well, that's all right you got the camper for that one it runs and drives oh man well we got her loaded down i've been driving for a little bit now we're headed towards norman and i just figured we could holler at the old truck guy and grab a little bite to eat here but he's fired he done he got a mortsky repair sweatshirt on and i don't know about that guys we're gonna grab some barbecue uh, i'm gonna hang out with my buddy then we'll be headed back uh to unload this thing actually we're gonna have to get on it tomorrow got a couple things we gotta do this evening so when I got home yesterday from being the Oklahoma traveler running all over the state side, uh, I pulled up to what I believe to be a very appropriate place. I pulled up right next to this Ford. <laughs> oh, long black Ford. Just playing guys, take a joke, okay? Um, you know, we're about to show you what some Chevrolet power looks like out of that V6 and you'll understand why I joke about the Fords. It's just a joke. We pulled up next to this dumpster, which is much needed. Right here I can chunk what I need to chunk. Or as my daughter would say, I can yeet it. Yeet! Now, let's start to see what we can find in here. I'm not expecting anything too good. Oh man, we got a new shitter seat lid thingy. Oh, someone uh, someone did a number on this one and soaked her good. <laughs> soaked her so good she's falling apart. <laughs> my eye! Oh, man. There's hairs in between it. Yeah, let's just get rid of that. The main thing I'm hoping to find is no rust in our bed floor. Good thing we kept our bucket. Cause for now, it's our trash bucket. Looks like we even got... We may have got a ratchet strap out the deal. Some good insulation for the shop add-on. Bang! Good piece of tie wire. <laughs> we may need that to get this running. Yeah. Dang! About to pop the billet grill on the boot scooting yukin or what? It's pretty evident the last people who had this I only used her as a dumpster. Good quality space heater right there. Also good for our shop add-on. No trespassing. Get your ass out of here before Mordsky calls the cops on you now. And it is a buttload of ratchet straps. We got a 61 Impala Bel Air Biscayne fender repair kit. If you ain't seen that video, you don't get that joke, did you? 61 Chevy, get a little rust on your front fenders. Don't worry, guys, just find you a can, nail that sucker to the fender. Very universal patch, split it open, nail it on down there, no problem. I'm gonna keep this just in case we need it. Little Nerf gun double barrel over under. Classic double strike. Had a few decent finds. Going through the rest of this, I'll show y'all in a minute. First, I got a sweeper it. It's nice, she's fancy and got the nice rubber mat in the back. Let me show you 
my, my, my treasures. Treasure number one. Some good half inch thick plate. Uh, they took uh, pride in their steak because this one's in the shape of Oklahoma. We like it. Pike County in at your service. Pike County pride, baby. Find number two. Good fan. We may need that. Who knows? She's a thermo trawl made in the USA. You got a nice thick bell housing of some sort. I don't know all these well enough to know what's for what, but it sure looks like a small block and I'm assuming you can put any four speed you want. Obviously that has that pattern. Your old Saginaw's probably Muncie's style things, but I'm no, you know, old school four speed guru. So, or it may not even be four speed. I mean, three speed, y'all know what I mean. Old, old standard transmissions right here. Nice firewall delete kit panel. If you didn't see our Pontiac video, well, there's a, there's a firewall delete panel right there. What else do you do with the electrical covers and boxes and everything? Guys, that's all it's good for. And lastly, but not leastly, uh, I'm pretty sure that's a part of our shitter as well. So we got the lid and we got the float. This ain't really good for nothing. I just wanted to show it to you guys. All right. I'm going to get this situated and we're going to get her towards the shop. Psych! We got some interior to clean out too. Nice little sunbathing chair, it looks like. Try to open her up and take her for a sit and all it did was rip apart and go everywhere. The mess is supposed to go in the dumpster. That's all right. My wife won't see that. She'll never know. Dang! Got old Dale in the parka. He looks like his name's Dale or Steve. Inside we found an extra pulley. It's like an interior piece. Uh, behind the seat, apparently your spare seat buckles in. It's kind of cool. A little cubby hidey hole. I never knew these had that. Other than that, found us a set of spark plugs. New in the box champions. What a setup and wagner brake products wet check brake fluid test strips never have heard of such a thing guess you just dip one of them in there and depending on what color it changes to you need to change it or you're okay well, i forgot we got a rat's nest to clean out anyhow let's have a look dang come with the plastic lid on these i want to guess that oh yeah we better test it to see if we should change that or not. There's really no other way to tell without these strips. They come pre-colored or what? I'm fairly certain you just dip these and it'll tell you. Let's see. Yep, that one got dark right there, see it? And according to this, as you go towards the dark on this side, it says okay, so I think we're good. Dang right, good thing we had them. She's ready to drive. You can bring that leaf blower over here, buddy, old pal. Let me pull all these big chunks and you can come blow her out. How's that? This rat's nest looked pretty uh, fresh. So the question's gonna be, are we now bringing a friend into the shop with us when we get this car inside? Yeah, your leaf blower may strap to your back and make 12 times the power mine does and everything, but does yours have electric start? No! Because this son of a beaver butt right here does. It just, it don't do you no good when you lose your socket in there as it starts. Hold on. if we just kind of drag her back that way then i can move the trailer and hopefully we can use the tow roller and get her maneuvered up into the shop yeah. pop tow roller your country needs you climb the ramps well that's one way to get her we'll just hook our chain on there drop the old stopper back on we got nice flat tires on the front that's gonna let it steer wherever it wants on both sides what's the worst that could happen Look, 
lost my momentum. Or are we hooked on something? Just a frame, maybe some exhaust hanging. We jack her up a little bit, should help. Yeah, that qualifies as a little bit. Just tug on it, give her a yank. Uh, that worked and luckily our ramps were in line with our front because once it was going, I was like, hey, let's not stop, you know? She had a little momentum. I love it when a game plan comes together. Getting her off the trailer is one thing. Man, this side looks so good. Oh, there is a little humdinger in the fender I just now noticed. Uh, let's see if we can get her in the shop too. We may have to air down on the old shit diggers. smoke show going on back here. We just need her to get momentum. Man, she don't want to roll in them flats, does she? It's a good thing that tailgate was dented because we are not helping it out. Actually, that was already like that. We did break our little plastic trim ring though. I actually think it was already cracked too, so I ain't too upset. I bet we get her on the concrete and we'll be good. We're making progress. Don't 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 let me fool you. For the sake of y'all being able to see, I'm just gonna pull the hood off. Give some marks here where we know where to put it back to. Oh, hold on, that's the wrong one. That's part of our hinge, because that pivots back there. This is just a spring. We need to take these off. Try to trick me. Look at this little sneaky devil. Whoa! Thought I had it with the shoulder. Them two hidden fast fasteners right there will screw ya. Did it? It's a screw. Get it? No? Okay. I'll hush. Yeah! Now we can see. Man, I got to kind of stop for a second. I apologize and just take this moment in because look what we got sitting in here right now. Look at these two beautiful rigs. One is known for her beauty, her nice lines, and just the, the American muscle look. One's known for her raw power, her torque, and for being a little uh, rowdy. One is known for just having this sexy appeal of a nice two-door, just good-looking old car, guys. Classic. And the other one is a 1967 Pontiac sitting behind me. My only experience with these kind of body style of cars, the like Caprice and Impalas, late 70s, early 80s, they have all been a V8 car. So this is actually the first one I've ever seen with the V6. Hey, before we set that there, we never finished our rust inspection, did we? And I never emptied the bucket. <laughs> uh, up here was a lot dirtier than back there. So I bet if the front's good, the rear's good. Oh, baby. Nice bed floor. That's what we like to see. All right, back up to this little rink dink thing. It's got some two barrel, kind of like a quadrajet style, I see. Got the same little lever arm thingy. Is that just a rock? Chester two barrel. If it's got four, it's a quadra jet. So what's that? A double jet, duba jet, double jet. Oh, it's actually called a dual jet. So I was pretty close. Not bad for spitballing. Uh, I've never seen one of these or worked on one of these. Damn old dual jet 210. Uh, where our little mouse house was, 
Looks like they got a few of our wires. We do got a lot of exposed wires. That's all run into our cruise control stuff. Don't worry about that. Other than that, she's got cute little valve covers. Real similar air conditioning to what we had just pulled off our GMC. Go figure. Here I want this thing to just hopefully make a good, cheap, decent cruiser. We were full rebuild the S10 suspension, the GMC suspension, even though none of them bushings are plumb blown out. This one I don't want to touch and look here. That bushing's blown out of there, ain't she? I bet the center's still solid. Don't worry too bad about that. She's got dual heater control valves. Got the manual shut off there. Uh, factory dive or vacuum actuated one there, it looks like. What in the turbo pumper system we got down there? Oh, I did not know how long I had that at my face. <laughs> oh man i'm gonna turn y'all around and i had said we got a heater control valve the manual one and then i noticed this thing which i don't know what that is don't have a belt going to it but it looks like it may spin that's interesting whatever whatever this thing is looks like something in it should spin anyhow where is a dipstick on a 3.8 liter see the one for a transmission at the back Oh, hey yo, underneath our little vacuum diaphragm canister for our HVAC whatever. We're hoping we've got a good motor. Uh, like I said, he told me all he knew was they quit. They pulled the gas tank for whatever reason. Other than that, it's supposed to run. Oil definitely looks like it could use change, but it's there. <laughs> definitely smells like gas. Definitely tastes like gas. There's more gas in there than there is oil. Yep, old, old gas. I could tell it looked thin at the top. Is your tongue supposed to burn? A little spicy oil in it. Got the spicy oil. Oil may be spicy, but spicy oil is better than no oil and or grain milkshake antifreeze water oil. We don't want no watered down oil. We'll take the spicy. Oh, spins real easy. That's good, probably means no compression. <laughs> Uh, barely had to give that any kind of torque to spin it some. When did the tag say? Oh yeah, 2009. So that ain't terribly old. Maybe it just got a rusty gas tank. And then from that, they were sucking up stuff, started having problems, gonna put a new tank in it, never got back to it. Or may maybe not even that. Maybe the sender went out and they ran out of gas a couple times and was like, hey, I've had enough of that. They go to pull it, it never goes back together. Who knows? Just know she's pretty complete looking. Uh, side post batteries, my favorite. I only have one here, I think. And I bet it ain't charged up. Because I accidentally killed it and never charged it good again, I don't think. Maybe I did. Now, I may not worked on a, a 3.8, but I have worked on one or two 2.8s. And that's only one liter off. Ugh. Well, at least we got one battery to work with. Check this out. Overflow tank is broken, but it's full of green stuff. I think her caps had, uh, oh, better days. I did not help that any, did I? Well, overflow may be full, but she's not. She's down to about right in there, it looks like. Everything is super green, though. I'll just pretend like I didn't break that. Now, y'all know usually I like to pull spark plugs and take a look in there and then shoot a little looby dooby just to help it. As, I mean, anytime a motor sits, it helps to lubricate the inside. Mordsky don't really believe in it, but I do. And uh, the only thing is, sure looks like a pain in the butt to get to these. Just got those set of spark plugs in real quick. No big deal. Take apart your air conditioner. Dang! These got the super wires. That sucker stretches plumb over here where it is duct taped to some type of hose for our charcoal canister. Then she drops way on down there. Oh, we may actually be able to sneak underneath there pretty easy. Can we sneak down there? Yeah. Yeah, I can get to that sucker. Uh, not as easy as I'd like. And that's just the front one. What about this side? Oh, even better. More vacuum craziness and good stuff like that. Hey girl, I know you've been sitting for a while. And I know you were left and abandoned and no one really cared for you. But that wasn't me, okay? And I, I'm here now, okay? I see you, you little dual jet 210. And you look lonely, but that's okay because I'm here now. So what you say instead of me giving you the works? I just put a little battery in you. And you're going to be real nice to me here. 
will figure out how to crank you. And you're just gonna crank good and everything. You'll, you'll probably have, you, you could be real nice and have some ignition, some spark for me even, okay? That way I ain't gotta be mechanicin' for 12 teen days out here trying to get you happy. What do you say, old pal? All right, here we go. We're just gonna hope this thing's nice to us. Cause I'm tired of pulling all the crap off these engines. Can't imagine why. Sphincter valves, heater hoses times seven, turbochargers, 14 vacuum hoses coming off the EGR valve. Can't imagine why I'm tired of messing with them. We need to start messing with the older stuff, just like from the 60s. You had one wire set of points, usually a one barrel carburetor. Easy enough to make it run. Give me a fresh battery. Uh, if gallon bags of pecans start showing up, that's how you know Bill's been by. He's been harvesting his front yard again. Wonder what old Bill's up to right now. Oh, I'm not the brightest man. Uh, but those those hinges sounded a little dry. So we put a little lubrication up in this situation and it ain't gonna hurt nothing. In fact, it's gonna help her. She's practically gonna be a brand new set of hinges. After about seven cranks. One, seven. Brand new. All right. The inside, we got a piece of our shifter and uh, Yep, and that is most definitely not hooked up. But our whole key situation, I don't know if that's actually the key for this, or if someone just wedged something in there and it stuck. Oh man, don't do that to me. Uh, let's try to put her up where park should be. All right, now we can get back to the lock. What comes out of there? What's it say on there? Uh, nothing Chevrolet, I don't think. Well, she's she's rotating. We ain't getting nothing. Got the business card for a home inspection specialist. McWilliams Eagle Eye Inspections. Y'all know I'm always using that Eagle Eye. Old McWilliams had it too, apparently. Are we gonna name this El Camino Eagle Eye? Cause I'm not a, I'm not opposed. It's either gonna be the El Camino with an A on the end or old Eagle Eye. Ka -ka! Dang, just noticing she's got the Roadmaster. Does this open this? Nope, oh, yep. Any mice? Nope. Just a disappointing piece of plastic. Oh, fancy. She's got a slot for one, or for your pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Well, let's investigate this. No key. I didn't see no lights come on when I was pulling that switch. Let's grab the old multimeter. Oh, nice. It appears I was correct about her battery. She is reading absolutely no voltage. Them old jump pack. She's in rough shape, but we're going to try it anyhow. Mm, and mm, right about now. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Uh, starter kicked in. Key's on. You got no power to the Roadmaster or what? No power to that. Hey, headlights came on. No power to any of our accessories, it don't seem like. Ain't got no blinkers. I kind of hear a relay clicking. She's spinning. Spinning like crap, but spinning's winning. Nope, that's no good. Well, butter my honey and call me a biscuit. Buddy, I get a lot of use out of that butter. I get a lot of use out of it. We need a better battery. Well, I went and got me a burrito because it was time to eat. And I did some pondering. And what if we do a little converting here? I should probably just get us a side post battery. In fact, for a while, I did a really good job of keeping us extra stuff. By extra stuff, I mean extra batteries. I had a, a top post, one that was a good side post, and everything else just over the years, uh, or here lately, you know, all the vehicles, they've got consumed. So we're past due. So I actually called and asked for a side post, or bought one, I mean. Uh, and I was hoping by the time I got back from getting a burrito, it'd be here, but it's not. So we're just gonna move forward. Move forward with some custom battery cable accessories. I'm a top post kind of guy. To me, the side post is kind of like the metric system. I don't hate it. It's just not my favorite. Look at all that corrosion in there. 
That's exactly what we were hoping to find. You know, if she's got bad cranking, that right there ain't gonna uh, help us any. Guarantee you that. Oh, man. Yeah, that sucker's been toasty warm before. See that? She's had better days. We'll try our luck with her anyhow. Because you know what they say. It'll work or it won't. Oh, tricky, tricky. Speaking of the metric system. Way down yonder is an old clamp. Yeah, there's a clamp down there. Uh, make sure that don't flop everywhere. Not to not get us a whole lot of extra, but a little bit. Snip! Hold on, hold on. Snip! Did I mention they're outside running the gas line for the shop? If you ask my wife, she would say, I don't need no help with the gas. I've got that covered. Boy, we've been eating them black-eyed peas, and I guarantee it. I could heat this place. Something about installing these on an El Camino just feels right. Silly me, I almost forgot our body ground. Yeah. As rusty as that cable is, that may be our only ground, so we want to put it in there for sure. Smoke that sucker to Alabama. Ha <laughs> ha! Top post, fresh out the GMC. And just barely. She reaches. That is what I'm talking about. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. We don't need no stinking side post. What's been going on right there? We had some rubbing or... Oh, that got hot, didn't it? Someone said something hot right there? Is she gonna crank good now? Oh, yeah. She's cranking. She's a stinking. She's a thinking she wants to run for me. I don't know why I sniffed the second time. You don't sniff when you think. <laughs> All right. Let's look at the double quad, double whatever carburetor. Uh, double jet. Dual jet. I'm going to remember it one of these days. Right there is probably a large vacuum leak. I'm assuming that went to our breather somewhere. All right. That's good. Someone's done redneck to this thing before. You can see right there is where our fuel comes in. Uh, that's probably got a filter in it, so we'll probably pull that apart too. Right here we got a rubber hose that loops down to a metal hose. So maybe it came like that, I'm not sure. The good news is all these vacuum lines just 100% fell apart by just barely even touching anything. That's exactly what we're looking for. You know, a million and one vacuum leaks. And for a fuel line there, you just want to take your best knife you got. Uh, yeah, because she's got the good handy screwdriver on her. And we're just going to try to pull that. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, all right, it said. Yeah, she's been on there for a minute. Ha-ha! <laughs> this is what makes it the best screwdriver for old fuel hoses. You get that clamp undone, you're still going to have to cut that sucker sometimes to get it to release. Yeah, Jiminy Cricket eating a Caesar salad. Come on. Come on. Oh, some shiny brass. Yeah, that's one of the main barbs. That's why. R.I.P. hose clamp. That thing's gone forever. Hey, you 70s and 80s gurus. What do you actually call these things? So if y'all don't know, y'all see that goes in our thermostat housing. Usually, the way I believe this works, one of these probably that one with the little check valve, is going to supply vacuum to this. And then at a certain temperature, this is going to open or close, then allowing vacuum to go out to other stuff. Uh, but what are these actually called? Besides a pain in the rear. I usually pull them out of there and just put a plug in there. You delete all the extra vacuum stuff. That's a good way to do that. We're going we're gonna to not worry about that. Y'all see that barb? It's got one heck of a barb on it. No wonder I couldn't pull that off. All right. Let's see if we can pull this where we can at least entertain the idea of uh, looking at that filter. A lot of times they're broke down, so we don't want to send none of that through there if we don't have to. All right. Get that. Oh. Oh, hey. Helps if you go the right way. I actually tightened it some. I accidentally bent that. Don't be doing that. If uh, this little dual, dual whatever, dual junk... 
is as fun to work on as a quadra junk. Uh, we definitely don't want to get into it if we don't have to. Of course, that's pretty shiny. Look at look at that thing. Who knows? Maybe someone had put a remanufactured one on this thing at some point in its life. Here's our spring. Pull our filter. I mean, that is that's dirty. Y'all can see it's a dirty color. <laughs> smells terrible. Uh, but I was kind of half expecting to see it like have some chunks in it or something. More or less just, you know, still spitballing of why did we ever, uh, or why why did they ever pull the gas tank out of the thing? I don't know. All I do know is uh, we ain't going to argue with it not being dirty in there. And we'll just slap it right back together, maybe, if I can get underneath all this vacuum baloney. At least this housing's a lot easier to get to on the two-barrel than the, a lot easier than the four-barrel, anyhow. Ah, ah. Before we get too carried away on fuel, I just realized uh, we got her cranking and uh, we never did actually check for spark. Now, I'm hoping for the best because we got HEI, which more than likely, I mean, those things are usually pretty good to you. I'm assuming that this is number one cylinder, but I don't actually know on these. I don't know why it wouldn't be. So we're gonna pull down there, get that off. We're going to take one of our good quality champions. The tune-up this rig never got. Bang! They did a good job on that packaging. That wasn't just falling out of there. I'm going to pop that on there. Then I'm going to take our locking pliers and lock that sucker to the gar carb. That's going to ground it. And then I'm going to use my eagle eye, just like old eagle eye. And we're going to see if we can see that thing sparking. Because I'm not sure where to hook up our uh, little cheater switch thingy. Where? Oh yeah, well I see our harness coming through underneath all this baloney. Man, the stuff is thick on this rig. Let me see if I can see it from here. Oh yeah, I think I seen a flash. I'ma send y'all in. Y'all keep an eye on it. I'ma kill the lights, maybe that'll help. Oh yeah, she's definitely sparking and darkin'. That's what we wanna see. Don't make me slap a new champion in her. Look at you with them stripes. You already are a champion. I've got good, glorious plans for you that only the future will unfold to the old internet here. All right, reach way down there in the hidden abyss where hopefully my hand don't get bit by a critter that was building a nest in here. Pop that back on. So short, sweet, and to the point, guys. We need a few things here to get this thing running. We need spark, which we have. We need it cranking. And then we need fuel. And we need compression. We don't know if we have compression, but we have no reason to believe that we don't have compression. So basically what I'm getting at, there ain't no reason we couldn't put no uh, get her done 91 down her throat and get her running off a bottle at least. Oh, yes. A well-aged bottle of get her done 91. Oh man, nice crisp smell. Let me give her another woof. Woo! God bless America. Hey ho, soldier. <laughs> this is left over from the old Pontiac, the Get Her Done 91, AKA Rocket Fuel. Full fuel. <laughs> Mordsky's cry baby tears. Hey, speaking of my good friend, Sir Mordicus, he loves El Caminos. I mean, he loves them. They're his favorite. No, they're not. He hates these things. He loves them so much that y'all should definitely go leave, leave him a comment on just anything pertaining to, pertaining to El Camino. He'll love you for it. All right. We, I think this is probably our vent for the carburetor. So I am going to aim for that and try to fill it up. This may take about half an hour. I was thinking long enough, I'm ditching that idea. I think she's gonna be good to me. So we're just gonna shove that in there. Get that choke open. Give her a nice little spritz in here. And let's just hit the key. Here we go. Woo! Woo! Oh, baby! Baby! Man! She didn't just run, she busted off! Running sometimes like busting off like boom, I'm ready to go. Did we get the marketplace find of a century here? Quite possibly. Come on. 
Ah, she's trying. Yeah, that's part of her problem. She's in gear. Gave her a decent little rev and uh, she tried to do a little boot scooting on us. Well, good as time as any to <laughs> celebrate. But also, I mean, guys, it was running. And I actually sound, I think it was healthy. It did sound like it had a nice exhaust leak. Oh yeah. <laughs> Speaking of exhaust leak, I seen that underneath there on the trailer. Uh, we'll get to it. It has an exhaust leak, so that's what we were hearing. Exhaust leak, sometimes, guys, you gotta be careful. Sometimes they can almost sound like a rod knocking or something. Sharp little tink, 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 or, you know, some chattering, whatever. Uh, I didn't hear nothing scary besides that exhaust leak. Uh, she's, she sounded good. So right now, uh, we don't want to get it running until we get it into park. We can't get it into park till we get underneath it. So let's go up with this rig. Head it up. Did someone say exhaust leak? All right, she's way up there. Did we remember to get our shifter linkage out of there? Absolutely not, perfect. Now our exhaust is hanging and she's wine dangling. And she has one heck of a bend like I ain't ever seen before on an exhaust. We're assuming that ain't supposed to be... Oh, yeah, that'll open her up a bit. Oh, man. Found some crusty, rusty floor pan rot. We were hoping she's going to be bone dry underneath here. Now, this ain't the only bit of worries from this exhaust. Uh, that, as well, is a small issue. So she went from the Y-pipe. Someone clamped on the flexi exhaust. And then it went to the straight pipe where we're assuming someone bypassed something maybe, or did they? Cause then it went to this, another clamp. Someone did not, all right, kicked up and over to another clamp. We got the sideways glass pack to out the side. What a setup and a half. Our uh, cinder gate, our, our fuel cinder wire just brushed me on my ear and I thought a spider was getting me or something. Frame looks good. Got some dirt dobbies. Uh, that's custom cooling fins on the rear end here. We'll just put them back. What we got here? The, I don't know, lift something shock absorbers. Oh, air shocks. She's ready to haul a load. Of course, these things are coil spring suspension in the rear. Nice little factory four link setup. Large part of why they ride so awesome. What in the funky fuel line? That's gonna be our supply from our gas tank. You can tell because it's a 3 8 return or vent. Probably a return though. 5 16 But look how that thing, the return goes plumb over there to Nantucket and then swoops back around. Then it does the gobble gooper and then it finally heads toward the front. Hey, what in the electric taped uh, fuel filter we got going on there? Someone thought the fuel tank was leaking and they pulled it out. No, it was your electrical taped up fuel filter that was leaking, bud. Who knows? Uh, the body. Let's look at the body. Look at all them mounts. Look at these braces and everything. Uh, thankfully, all of it is looking pretty solid. I go back up towards the front. All this is good. What about out on our rockers? I'm just assuming all that's good because everything out here on the outside is looking good. It's unfortunate someone got us there. Uh, well, something got us, I mean. This side, sorry, I'm trying to focus and see. My eyeballs aren't the best about eyeballing, uh, but everything else is looking pretty solid on the old El Camino. These have the same frames as the hoopty cars, don't they? Same, same frames as like the 84 Caprice. Uh, I said 84, because I used to have an 84, sorry. Just saying like those box, box cars, whatever. It looks like the same frame. Well, it has some shifter linkage to it. Anyhow, uh, we're just missing this piece that goes from this into this. So that should be easy enough. There's a proportioning valve that's been hiding from us. Just playing, I just happened to notice that. It's kind of funky how it, our proportioning valve holds a bracket also for our shifter. 
What in the twisted zip tie wires I got going on here? Those come out to here. What is this? Is that part of our cruise control add-on? Probably. I'm just assuming that because that whole bundle of wires was running to the front add-on stuff, so I don't know. Seals leaking. Transmission in general is leaking, probably. Wonder what this is. Metric. Hydromatic. So it's probably only good. It probably ain't good for any of our V8s. It's probably only good for the uh, V6s. I am i don't know. I'm just assuming. You know what that does. So that means this front end, this front frame, if it is the same, is actually the same frame that I put on the front of this pickup truck because that's what all that front independent suspension is. But it's been a long, long time since I've uh, studied any of it. So I don't know. Maybe it is a little different. All that matters is, one, it's all here. And two, she's in pretty impressive shape for what she is. If we, if we get that shoved back up this way, we can get our exhaust, our race exhaust back on, I mean. Just to uh, unclamp that, beat the devil out of it, and she's free. Let's get the mobile slice and dice. Let's get this old exhaust looking right. Get rid of the old flexi. Very unprofessional. So I had a side angle cut for high performance, better flow, but that don't help us for actually matching up. So I cut her straight where we've got a half decent circle there. Right here, we've got a half decent circle. Man, I've always wanted an El Camino just for stuff like this. El Camino things. I mean, that's gonna be kinda close. Hold on, let's check the angle. Hey, that looks pretty good for no more than what we're working with. I'm gonna cut this at a little more of an angle, cut this at a little more of an angle. Oh, baby. We get her tacked in and you can see how well that's gonna flow. Just matches beautifully. Just a simple love tap or two will have that matching and a good velocity angle like that improves the exhaust where it actually pulls more fumes from the back side of your exhaust valves, thus increase, increasing torque, fuel economy, and horsepower usually. All thanks to that football shape right there. It'll weld. Just stack your tack, nothing but the best for this performance rig. Looks solid. All right. Put a little teardrop on that exhaust, cut her at an angle. Pretty sure this right here is what they were trying to achieve. They just didn't know how to do it with all them clamps and stuff. She's a hell of a lot closer to being a race car now. Y'all lucky we ain't keeping this party going. You know what I mean? That's a match and a half right there. Now that we got the most important thing taken care of, we can actually look at our shifter linkage where maybe we can get this thing uh, operating. So we wanna make sure our uh, shifter is all the way up to where park should be. And then this thing all the way up right there should be park. You got that long space in between. So park, reverse, neutral, third, second, first. And all the way back up, there we go. So now we need them to connect. 
Uh, I pulled our linkage that come with it out of there. And I don't know this is actually for El Camino. It's actually a little different. That don't mean we can't make it work. We just gotta kinda look and see. All right, well, something like that's what we're after. Oh man, this is too easy. I mean, up top, basically battery and gas, and she busts it off. Down here, uh, the one piece we're missing came with the vehicle. That little piece is exactly what we needed. Wonder why that ever got uh, lost, what they were doing, why they pulled it off. Yeah, I don't know. The, the mystery of why did a decent car so far get parked. She had a frame in her. So you could say she's been uh, taken care of quite well before they slammed it, they framed it. Oh, first time sitting in it and closing the door. How's she feel? She feels pretty good. How is this feeling? Feels like we're shifting, I think. Oh, she had enough fuel in her. She tried to bust off. She's gonna sound rowdy with that new racing exhaust. Oh, there's always a kicker. We ain't got no interior door handle. This thing's a piece of crap. Well, I believe she's in park now. Uh, she's wanting to run. We need a better fuel system than relying on our bottle and spray. So let's see if we can't rig us up a, a standalone fuel system, especially considering we ain't got an actual uh, tank. We're going to need one of these pre-used. We need that good, good thick stuff. I lubed up her hose because this fitting's one of them good ones. Shove on there. Go, yeah, baby. I don't even think we got to clamp that. I think it'll seal. Kind of favor this over here. And we'll go ahead and pop on her. Pick up. Uh-oh. Make dog's here. And zip tie her down. You don't want that flopping around on you too much. Got us a good uh, fuel tank rigged up there. We're about to top her off. So we're gonna go in, come out, boom. Then rigged us up some wiring. She got the electrical tape special, like her fuel filter underneath here. We're just gonna take it straight to the battery. Let's get some of that good stuff in her. Yep, up, oh, up. Oh. Spill it everywhere where if we have a backfire, she burns down. Looks like I'm using some old transmission, old transmission fluid jug. That's good, because if there's transmission fluid in there still, maybe just a little bit. That'll just go in there and help clean out this old motor. Grab us a stuck float fixer and a little flashy light. I could hear her chugging until she deadheaded. And I don't see fuel coming in there. So I'm assuming the old float's working. A few extra taps never hurt nothing though. Oh baby, she's spraying. She's spraying, I'm praying. Let's see if she's gonna run for us. Come on, baby. I thought she was going to be loud. She's just idling. What a rig. A nice, clean idle. Woo! Woo, woo, woo! That may be quite possibly the easiest wheel at run we've ever had, guys. I don't, uh, I don't know. I can't really remember them all, but I mean, we're basically talking to actually get it running. A battery and a rigged up fuel pump, battery and gas. And then of course we messed with the exhaust cause it was hang hanging or whatever. But to get it running, to hold a idle, have good spark. I mean, it didn't take take hardly nothing it's crazy why people park good vehicles sometimes uh, we have seen it over the years time and time again and people's like oh no one would ever park that guys we drug out that datsun wagon uh rs10 over there the future giveaway truck i mean nothing significant wrong with either one of them and uh after talking with the junkyard owners afterwards you come to find out like you know a member of a family passed away and you know that was their old vehicle and so and so in the family was going to drive it and they drove it and then they just parked it they're tired of it they got newer cars why would they want that old beater 
it, it hangs around parked in someone's backyard or garage or whatever you know until another family member no longer wants anything to do with it and another family member later they're finally just calling someone going hey will you come get this thing uh, it's just an old junk truck we don't know nothing about it just come get it it happens and i don't i we i don't know any history on this one the gentleman who i got it off of didn't know any history other than the gas tank but uh motor sounds healthy uh i don't see any reason why this thing should have been pulled off the road back in 09. uh the gas tank should have come out of it someone should have put a gas tank right back in it and this thing probably would have stayed in a little bit better shape instead of just sitting for a decade or a uh, decade and a half getting rats in it and everything else all right and t minus about 35 minutes i have something i absolutely have to do if i don't do it my wife's gonna put her foot up my hind end so i'm pretty happy with today's progress i mean just getting it in here uh i was hoping hoping by the end of the day we would have it ready to start for tomorrow she's idling so as far as i'm concerned and she's got custom exhaust we're already ahead of the game here we are ahead that's right i was doing some sexy eyebrows that's because I, I knew she was back there staring at me and i just i wanted to give her something back a little let's see how the old duet jet wants to fire up for us this morning the real test okay we got her running yesterday but how she bust off first thing in the morning see you later honey me and benny's gonna go to the donut shop for the breakfast no pump for nothing so yeah yeah she is a good basically yeah she whispered it again she's telling me she wants to drive for us i do believe let's uh let's uh uh uh, uh jack her up halt let's top this off before i forget again yeah let's let's put some water in her man oh man oh man that's some real good green stuff Next, we're gonna lift her up and pull her into gear to see if we got some transmission. Ooh, yeah. That is not the best of color, not the worst. Trans fluid's supposed to be pink, and uh, it's got a slight tint of brown to make it. Yep, yeah, supposed to be, never mind. I'm not gonna say. I ain't gonna say. It could look better. I don't want think, people think I'm trying to be gross minded. I almost rhyme something that don't need no rhyming. I ain't gonna start a second ago, but not now. Oh, she ain't got no fuel pressure. She's running off the bowl. Reverse. Oh, that one ain't spinning. And that one ain't spinning. Reverse lights work. Hey, that's a plus, I guess. Hey, you're supposed to spin. No transmission? Uh-oh. I'm trying different things, just hoping it's gonna do something. That's all the way down. And it ain't doing deadly. Well, if anything, at least she sounds like she's got a hog ass cam in her just blah 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 blah. Uh we got nothing out of that transmission. Uh, now I seen a little bit on the dipstick when we first checked it. Oh, fuel pump was still chugging. However, I checked it when it was running there and that thing looked pretty dry. And unfortunately, I think that means we get to leave now because I'm out of trans fluid. Well, crap in a bucket. I've got one quart. And the fact that that didn't even try one bit, uh, one quart ain't gonna get it done. We gotta go get some trans fluid. Got bad news for Pot County. Woo! 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 I know some, oh, I know some people rely on having a quart of trans fluid to pour in their vehicle just to get home around here. But unfortunately, the local dollar supply place is out, unfortunately. p -Tine got it all. Now she is dry, dry and empty, empty. Uh, we'll pay attention to make sure that as we start to add this, 
We don't just see it coming out the bottom side somewhere, I guess. You can give a splash or two down the old tandem jet if you want. Help clean out the top side of the motor. A little extra right there off of that one. Give it to the old duo jet. All right, we're gonna fire her up. That way we start pumping our fluid and I'm gonna just top her off as we go until I think we get enough. Hey! Looky there. Look what's wobbling. Oh man, I was hoping we had Posse on this rig. Oh, she tried to go into reverse uh, and then she died. I'm sure she's still a little cold. She was trying. I checked that a second ago and it sure looked over full. Uh, I may have put plumb too much in it. Probably made a mistake assuming it was super duper low because you know what assuming does. Yes, when it's up past full hot as it's cold by at least a half inch, that's sufficient amount. <laughs> so let's go backwards now and try to take some of this out since I was a bright guy who overfilled it. I'm assuming our uh, supply to our cooler here these are our trans cooler lines i'm assuming the supply comes in the top and then it gravities well it pumps down but it's also going to run downhill and return out the bottom i could be wrong oh we also may not be removing that because she is pretty tight trans fluid's flammable so don't do what i do not a lot just get her warmed up a little bit and give her a spritz in of the lubrication. A little luba dooba dooby. Oh yeah, there she pops. Please, nothing strip out. Go ahead and get that drain pan before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Well, that's interesting. Pop that out of there and I didn't get nothing. I know how we can tell real quick. Yep, she's pumping. <laughs> I heard splat. See, and I think I picked the right side as well. Perfect. Just a slight, slight little cleaning to do now. Little, little mess of roo. Hey, this ain't bad. We're basically giving this thing a flushing because it looks like it spit out a lot of the old nasty stuff. So maybe we're doing this thing a little good actually. Push this on a piece of fuel hose, looping her up into old trans fluid container. We got a clear thing over here. I think we probably need to pull about two quarts. Please be good to me. Oh, it's filling up, I can see it. She's flowing good. Ha 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 ha, fast, fast like lightning. Oh yeah, that got some fluid out of her. Well, now she's reading plumb down there, can't even see it. We're gonna write a fine line here, ain't we? Yeah, I think she's about right there. I think I took probably half quart too much. Oh yeah, because I said two quarts and I went one, two, almost three quarts. Let's see how that stuff's looking. How? Oh yeah, that looks terrible. Don't put that back in. <laughs> that looked like molasses mixed with my dad's coffee. And he drank that stuff black, black. This thing may have gear oil in it instead of transmission fluid, you know what I mean? Next time, if I'm going to do a little testing to see if I got the right line free, we'll probably go ahead and put a piece of hose on there and run it through our uh, little jug. So if I am right, I don't make a big old mess. But luckily we got some cans of brake clean here, so that mess is practically gone at this point. Didn't make a mess at all. Took away two and three quarter when I pumped it out. Then to get it back where I needed it, I added two and a half. Uh huh. The math ain't mathing because that thing was plumb up here. Like I way overfilled it. Anyhow, it's reading good now. You know, math don't always have to add up, guys. She's running on at least five out of six cylinders, I think. Uh, transmission's trying to transmit. So let's look at our brakes. I know we tested the with our brake strips earlier. 
uh, but I may doubt the results they were telling us of this being good to go. Let's suck out that old stuff, we'll clean it up, we'll clean it out, and then uh, we'll just try to flush them and hope for the best. We're gonna start off with a Suck Job Deluxe. We got some good yummy stuff going on in there, don't we? What about down in there? Oh yeah, just as good. See, we just sprayed her with some brake clean using my TKO hand cleaning light and just kind of scrubbing around in here, trying to break free all the nastiness. Kind of looking like a poorly mixed Rocky Road milkshake, so I think we're making progress. You know what they say, if you can't suck it out, Blow it out. Did y'all see that? I must have pressurized the brake fluid because that sucker shot straight up. It done hit an old, old yeller. No, that was a dog. Old Faithful, the geyser. She done erected on us. Got brake fluid up there where our paint's in good shape too. But look at the crud down in there. I'm trying to get all that crap out. Yeah, she's looking better. That thing was squirting like my super soaker in 1999. I'm finished scrubbing, scrubbing her out here, guys. Whoa, easy. Easy. Not trying to make no more of a mess than what we have to. What is that? Looks like a loogie's in there swirling around. Piece of solophane. The more I look at these, the more I like them. That's a sweet looking wheel right there. Oh, two will do. This is my kind of person, two lug nuts. Ha, oh. Then we got one of these ugly wheels, I didn't even notice. These came on like the Camaros and S10s, didn't they, or Camaros? It's a damn shame we didn't get a set of four of them babies. You can tell she's a race car, she's got them baddie long shank lug nuts. None of these front ones were tight. Perfect! We got good old tie wire wrapped around that sucker. Dang, had some new pads on it. Look at that. Hose is a little crusty. That don't really matter, does it? There's her bleeder. There's her bleeder. There she be. 10 millimeter. Oh. Hey, she's, she's losing fluid already. We were getting somewhere till we weren't. I got the sucker on it and uh, I tapped right in here and then I started seeing a lot of air go through it and then some fluid. Then I was tapping on all this, and, but she never quite got going. I got up there trying to pump on it and then Slick come walking in, which wasn't even planned, but I'll take it because he's more than welcome to get up there and start pumping away. Someone overfilled this, so pump slow, buddy. Pump slow. Didn't get crap. Go again. We ain't getting nothing. Well, that's not good. We ain't getting diddly. Hit your pedal, Slick. Nothing. When I was up there, it felt like it had a pedal. He said it feels like it has one. Now this, this sucker's stiff. I think because our pads are one inch thick. Oh, no. You got it pushed? No. Oh. <clears throat> so that's dragging or something. You got it pushed now? Yeah, there ain't no way I can move that. Let off. Ugh. She's spinning. She ain't happy about it. Push it. Oh yeah, that stopped it. Go ahead. <coughs> All right. Are they getting better as we go? It's like yeah, back ones are, back ones are definitely, they're like kind of doing what they're supposed to. This one ain't doing nothing. And that one's doing way too much. <laughs> Damn overachiever over there. <laughs> See, she's slick. I ain't got no brakes. <laughs> or sometimes too much brakes. This one wasn't doing nothing. Just for grands, we hopped over here and I tried bleeding this side. And it freed up. And I was like, all right, 
maybe we're onto something there. So we bled her a few times. And as you can see right now, they're both spinning. Pump it three times slick, but then let off. Three good stomps right there. That one's still spinning. This one is not. And uh, I've concluded that we're holding pressure somewhere. I had her down a second ago. I beat all over the master cylinder as slick pulled back on it, thinking if we're holding pressure in there, as far as the rod or something, you know, hopefully to get it back, it did not work. My next thought is proportioning valve. And I got up underneath there and beat on it with a hammer and that did not work. We had bled on this side too and it started bleeding out fine. She just needed an old school stomping bleeding. Uh, so that leads me to not worry too much about hoses. Cause I mean, it when you bleed it, it's flowing good. So I don't know what has us. And guys, it ain't much. If I crack, crack that bleeder now, I mean, just a few little drops comes out. But you can tell it comes out with a little force. It ain't just like residual or hanging out there. And just as soon as you crack it and close it back, this will spin. Crack it. Oh, drop the wrench. Close it back. Hey, she spins again. A little more troubleshooting. We pumped her up again where she's dragging. And I just, I feel like the pedals in there got slopping it. I had Slick Phil. He said it's got at least three sixteenths, he thinks. So I had frigged these up to make sure that just nothing with the pedal assembly had us jammed on this side and she still got tension on her. So something has to be hanging up in our master cylinder and or our proportion and valve depending on how they work exactly. I don't know. All I do know is we're gonna tighten that back up for the sake of using the hammer. I'm gonna beat on the master cylinder some. I'm gonna beat on the proportion and valve some and then We'll start driving it and stuff will either free up or it'll fight us and it'll self clearance on the brake pads. Clearance is clearance, clearance. <laughs> <laughs> So there's some fun things that happen whenever wheels interchange around the shop on vehicles. <laughs> Slick's trying to figure out what tire size he needs for that old Pontiac. I need some uh, Chevy wheels that have tires with air. So we're robbing the poor S10 for here, or for now. Slick had to try the little center line on the back of the S10. Dang, she got the 90 stick out. You dang right. We're gonna have to polish them up, Slick. We slap them on the back and put a 383 stroker down in her. <laughs> Here at Puddin's wheel and tire and alignment, if you want a set of wheels, it's gonna have to be a set of steelies. And if you want alignment, I will only do it by eye. El Camino. So see her down on the ground. I decided to go with the 14s because this car would have came with 14s. And I think it's gonna give us just maybe a little bit better proportion or they may be too small. Hey yo, I'm not mad at it, especially if we're going for a little low rider. Hmm, maybe a little heat, heated springs in the future here shortly. Oh, mock it. Do you hate it slick? Do you love it slick? I drive it. I drive it, that's what I'm talking about. I'd blow the tires clean off of it with that side exit exhaust. Been running so good. Now it has go time. She wants to be Henri. What the hell? Dang, got the old soft cushion right, huh? What a rig. Progress. <laughs> Just let her burn. Let her think about how she's acting. Uh, Guys, we've cranked on it, thought maybe it was flooded, pulled plugs, plugs look dry, not wet at all. Uh, give it an extra fuel, it won't try. Give it hardly any, we should got some uh, marshmallows earlier. <laughs> uh, I just, we had it running on this for a little bit. Uh, our, our wiring's acting a little funky. Pump them brakes for me, Slick. Yeah, 
good brake lights up front. So I thought something may be going on with our wiring, like it was maybe shortened, sometimes cutting out our uh, distributor. So I ran us a hot wire just for it to make sure none of our factory wiring was getting us. Man, she is good. How does something go from just running to, uh-uh, I refuse. my brows on that one. Do you hear the knocking? How does it go from holding some idle this morning to now, as long as I keep it full pegged and spraying this in there, it's trying to run. That makes zero sense. We touched the brakes and the transmission. All of a sudden motor's like hell with that. You gave that, you gave them other components too much attention. I'm out of here. Damn dull duet jet will get you. Ah, here we go. Breaking a distributor free. I know what you're thinking. It was already running. And I agree with that. Hey, someone sent us a distributor wrench, by the way. I appreciate it. We usually ride the struggle bus at this point. But guys, it's getting fuel. I've tried every version. We know it's getting air. Uh, I pulled the spark plug, put the plug wire on there, watch the spark, even though those old plugs are dirty, that spark's better than a lot of stuff I've ever owned that has spark. I mean, good looking spark. Bill's here, by the way, by coincidence. He must have heard an engine not running and went, ha ha, I'm needed. Uh, but I was thinking, all right, I was thinking timing. And then I kind of talked to Sir Mortigas and he said, you think it jumped timing? And I said, well, Everything else is there, you know. I, I, I doubt compression just packed its bags and left. Uh, and then I called Uncle Rick and he said, you think it jumped timing? And I said, well, I was kind of thinking that and then hearing it twice. Uh, I think we're gonna loosen this distributor and try to crank around on it and just see if we get any closer to it actually running kind of normal again. And then if that happens, we'll go from there. Let's try to start it, but it starts popping back there, yeah, timing's off. Yeah. Uh, Uncle Uncle Rick did too say, he seems to remember something about these three eights from around here having the plastic timing gear or something to do with the timing chain. I don't know anything about 3.8, so that don't sound good to me. Do you ever work on any of these? Not that much, but you they know, did have a nylon timing chain. Nylon timing yeah. chain? Yeah. The chain itself? No, set? the gear, the, the cam gear was nylon. Oh, well that's it's good. To make it quiet and the chain's metal and then the bottom gear's metal. But the, the cam gear oh, is nylon. Nylon. To make it quiet. Make it quiet. But the engine will be quiet when it don't run. <laughs> cool. Compression there. Bolt number one. Uh, that way, I think in time, and if we know we can get it to top dead center, we can look and pop a cap and see maybe we're just plumb off or something. Gotta find them indicators though, right? Bill, wherever they may be hit underneath all this crap. Yeah. No, no indicators, no problem. We just put the borescope in there, and I had Bill watch as I cranked her to top dead center, and you right there. That's the edge of the block and the piston right there. Number one comes here, duct tapes here, intermingles, does the dance, song and dance, all Next, the way. This one. I'm gonna double, triple verify since this is all tangled. Uh, yeah, number one right here on the front. Well, I'm trying to figure out where it actually clicks on because it ain't dropping down in there now. All right, oh, there she goes. So that's supposed to be one. Number one. Survey says. Oh, it's on number one. She's dead nuts. So now not as she not only is she not running, we lost our timing also. <laughs> for from me busting her free. <laughs> I mean that's a good thing. That means she didn't jump timing. Mm -hmm. I mean we should be all right there. Except we're not all right. See, I remember I said compression 
probably didn't pack up and leave. Told Bill if her timing's good, let's do the quick thumb test. These plugs are hell to get to. We know number one's got compression. We got it top dead center, so we move on to number two. As I wiggle that spark plug out of there, look at that. That stuff's like hard as a rock, huh? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I, I made a joke earlier because I could tell it wasn't running the greatest. And I said, uh, she's running on at least five out of six. Yeah. What if she was running off of five out of six, but we lost another one somehow. Right. So now we're yeah. trying to run off of four out of six. Not that is not looking promising. You want to bore scope that cylinder? Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Well, got, got pretty good looking cylinder walls. Top of the pistons, pretty Typical, normal looking of a motor. Try to look towards our valve. Of course, can't rotate this, but, oh. Oh, hey, there's a valve. There's one. It's yeah, she, she's open, huh? So what we can see in there, I would say looks good. Maybe these old Boshes just ain't been changed <laughs> since about 1980 or something, you know? All right, here we go with the finger plug test. Go ahead, Bill. So he's got compression. All right, I'm gonna check the rest of these. Hey, it wasn't a compression test with like a gauge, but given all of them, the uh, finger test, none of them. Uh, we're just checking for like obvious stuck valve or something where we had absolutely no compression. compression. They all had compression. So looking at our spark plugs, none of them were quite like that one. Uh, that one we know because I knocked a chunk out of that guys. So that one probably was not sparking So we were running on five uh, But I don't remember which one one of them the plug wire Basically kind of fell off as I pulled on it So if we lost that one there, like I said, we may drop down to trying to run on four uh, long story short to conclude what we're going on to next because I'm tired of getting wet by this little mullet machine. Uh, I'm gonna clean up two of these dirtier plugs that come with our El Camino on the wire wheel. We're gonna gap these puppies, put them back, and we're gonna hope that's what the problem was. Ha ha! That one's actually gapped to 45 thou, which is good. That's our target. Ah, ah. Oh, yeah, that's good. These babies come pre-gap from 1984. I was kind of being a punk, and I always say mama didn't raise no punk, guys. I should have uh, pulled the spark plugs yesterday and checked all that stuff when I first kind of wanted to. I thought they were gonna be really hard to get to. Once you get figure out how to actually reach up underneath there, it's actually not that bad. That side's all on, plug wires, everything. One, three, number five, she's on. you think the problem is, Bill? What'd you say? Ignition module. You don't trust these old GM ignition modules? I think they'll act a little funky from time to time. Popped in there, swapped one out real quick. And I'm just kind of cleaning on some of the corrosion I found in here as well. She was not the cleanest on the inside. Did you see all that crud blow out of there? <laughs> the Pot County Legend Rebuild. Damn right, Bill. Go, Bill! I, I'm doing the, I'm, I'm frustrated blinking, but I'm glad she's running right now. She's running better than she was before, probably because all six cylinders are firing. You damn. <laughs> he recorded on his jitterbug. Man, man, oh man, Bill. What a set of problems we were having there, guys. Uh, and probably all because that ignition module took a crap. Had that never, if that wasn't messing up, we would have stayed running on five cylinders, which wasn't the best. Uh, but now I do believe she's running on six cylinders. So she kind of got a tune up, all right? She become a little more of a hot rod in the process. So are we mad about it? Probably not. She's probably gonna do donuts a little better now.
I, I, I earned that one, okay? She wanted to be stubborn. I had to blow some tire off. <laughs> there it is. Blew some tire off of that. I'll tell you one thing, Bill. She rides like a damned old Cadillac. <laughs> Sucker smooth. Sucker is smooth. Yeah, that carburetor got a little too loaded up, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah. Got my own driveway blocked. It's all right. She's an off-road rig. We gonna be able to cross? Yeah, we'll cross. Use that exhaust and set that old dry grass yeah, all on fire. Fox County burnt down this evening. A live look at a grass fire. We understand that that is in Pottawatomie County. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. That carburetor is not happy yeah. one bit. Uh -oh. If you get it plum cleared out, it's all right, but it is not handling a load. No. I don't think she's gonna slide, Bill. I don't think the carburetor can handle it. <laughs> She's trying. <laughs> she pick she pick and chooses when you start gotta let out of it to swing around then it like kind of falls on its face because the carburetor uh i had to let out some over there and then when you let out these tires because this grass and ground so soft <laughs> yeah. it like catches and you got to keep them spinning to stay sliding yeah she's a smoking a little bit she a little toasty up there bill just leaking everywhere oh it's flashing out that overflow the broken tank oh oh yeah <laughs> she's splashing I was like, right there doesn't feel like oil oh yeah that's all it is all right come on bill we're just slinging antifreeze everywhere we're gonna take that as a victory i mean honestly i thought we were gonna do that five hours ago and then she wanted to whoop me a little bit so uh i'm not mad about that i actually learned a little bit in fact if y'all want a flashback to the 77 caprice that we did a will it run on uh from what i can recall this video is a couple years ago let me get this tractor in the shop that 77 caprice okay it was a similar thing i remember getting it running i'd have to watch the video so don't quote me on this but i remember at some point i thought i had it running and then it wouldn't run i couldn't keep it running checking spark fuel blah 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 spent half a day dead batteries Never got it going that day. Come out the next morning and within five minutes or so, vroom, she's running, did a big smoky burnout, closed out the video, I think towing the trailer and everything with that car. And uh, I'm gonna say it was probably that uh, module coming in and out now that I know that. I didn't really know they could come in and out or kind of work and not work. Uh, I've always known them to just be good or be bad, not be a pain in the rear little misleading GM HEI module. I think we would have actually a really good runner uh, with a good carburetor on this thing. Kind of do what we did like on our GMC over there of pulling off all the extra baloney and just putting a good carburetor on it. Something that's better than what that little turd is. Motor-wise, it sounds pretty healthy. I mean, when I could keep it in the higher RPMs where the carburetor couldn't mess up, she, uh, she was getting it. Yeah, no, a couple times it ran real good down there. It was running real good. Probably made a good 47 horsepower. <laughs> 6,800 RPMs. Hey, Tommy Chong, what do you think we lowrider this thing? Uh, what if she was squatted down a little bit? To do that, we'd probably just get some springs for this thing. We could heat the springs real quick just to kind of mock up uh, because I think this car has some potential. Uh, no, I know it has potential, guys. So we could heat some springs real quick. Not the right way to do it, but knowing we're, we could, knowing this car will get a different set of springs, it don't bother me to do it just to see if we like how it looks. In fact, I've never heated a set of springs before. You out of here? See you, Bill. Thanks for the help. That brought her down a little bit, but we want a little more than that. We still 
still need more. Yeah, that's a little better. It's not as low as I'd like, but it's better than none. I'm trying to beat us losing the rest of our daylight 100%. get our hood on her. I dropped our fuel tank down. My marks all lined up good. She shut decent. Gaps are decent. Y'all say we finish up with a set of caps here. Y'all know I like me some stillies and caps. <laughs> it's practically a new car at this point. <laughs> I don't know about a new car, uh, but she looks a lot better than she does. I'm hoping we got enough sunlight where she ain't too pixelated on y'all. I did uh, take my sweet patina uh, all-purpose cleaner and give this side a little bit of scrub down. This is our better side, less dense, whatever. Uh, so the wheels and tires that being squatted just a little bit, it, it gives you an idea of the potential I've seen in this thing. I love the color combo, uh, the stripes down the side, the little hooks. Uh, really, even with the caps on there where that kind of brightness goes with the trim and all the, it's just kind of doing it for me, guys. I mean, that was a raw, nitty gritty, quick transformation by all means, but it looks pretty good for what it is by all means. Oh man, so I bought this thing a few months ago, finally had time to get it. I didn't want to get it because I was afraid I was going to fall in love with it. And we've got so many plans we're already trying to figure out, but here we are, okay? Here we are with the El Camino that I just really seem to enjoy for some reason. So you've seen us get it running, then you've seen it not want to run, then you've seen us get it running again. And I even gave her a quick little makeover. Now, I'm pretty happy with uh where we made it to on this thing but she still needs a lot of love guys i mean that was a i was doing i did not start with a big old mess this morning but here we are all right um she still needs a little carburetor love i think oh yeah and as far as it running bad i think carburetor was part of our issue too so i think we were definitely on five cylinders uh sometimes kind of dropping to four the carburetor obviously is not the happiest. It wants to let it load up. Uh, we may have a float that's cracked that has finally got some fuel in it or something. You know, I don't really know. I ain't even paid attention or looked. Uh, Cause we're gonna have to mess with it in the future. We're not gonna fix all that in this video. And uh, I learned some stuff this go around. Some of what to do and what not to do, you know? I'm honestly surprised it ran from the start the way it did with us finding that plug and then some of it i mean we got lucky from the get-go and then not so lucky on the deep end i reckon uh but in the end we're winners because we stuck with it we got it going we got her looking half decent enough to go in there and dream on tonight anyhow uh, so the next time y'all see that thing i don't know when it'll be but i can promise you it's gonna be different like i said we can get some better springs underneath it uh we can get it probably running making a little more power uh we may need a little bit bigger tire on it i'll have to kind of look at it and see you know but uh i promise y'all next next go around this is gonna look different uh, i appreciate y'all watching i had fun this go around uh got plenty of energy this week thankfully and uh anyhow uh, thank you guys uh put on fabshop.com for that good quality merchandise and yeah, we'll be back strong in January. People have been asking for hoodies. We got some hoodies. We've got some hats. We've got some other shirts. We'll figure it out. Uh, so we appreciate all the support there. Y'all supporting that has made this possible as far as uh, us getting the bigger shop, stuff like a lift, you know, being able to 
to move forward with the Puddins Fab Shop. So I can't thank you guys enough uh, on behalf of me and my family. Keeping this small town kid's dream alive. And uh, I, why am I going to get emotional over El Camino? I started saying that because I've always wanted one of them things. And I don't know why, but here we are. And uh, just thank you guys for letting me live my dream. Thank you all for coming back and watching, sharing, liking, telling me, Mom, and Paul, and your uncles, all of them to check it out. Uh, sharing, just sharing it for me. So I'm on the Instagrammer. I'm on the Patreon. I'm on the Facebooker, kind of, sort of. And I will see you guys next time. However, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. I'm glad that was underneath me. I was afraid I missed. If I would have just failed, oh man, that's how you end the video. <laughs>